الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا وإن الدنيا عرض حاضر يأكل منه البر والفاجر ألا وإن الآخرة أجل صادق يقضي فيها ملك عادل قادر يحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ألا وإن الخير كله بحذافيره في الجنة ألا وإن الشر كله بحذافيره في النار ألا فعملوا وأنتم من الله على حذر وعلموا أنكم معروضون على عمالكم فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected ulama ikram, elders, beloved brothers in Islam Allah's greatness, Allah's azmat, Allah's kibriyai, Allah's jalal This is wara'ul wara' beyond human comprehension there's no measuring tape, there's no yardstick, there's no scientific formula. There are no words and expressions or utilization of one's human intellect that will even scratch the surface or do an iota of justice to comprehending, describing, realizing the azmat, the greatness, the kibriyai, the jalal of Allah. What do we have at our disposal to describe Allah? We use words. Words are made up of letters, letters, alphabets. This is makhluk. This is a created entity. And that which is makhluk, that which is created, can never ever do justice to describing khaliq. Makhluk is finite, it is limited. Every aspect of the creation has limitations. Allah's greatness, Allah's zat, Allah's being, Allah is khaliq, Allah is the creator. There is no limit, there is no means by which in any way we can comprehend Allah's magnificence, Allah's sifat, Allah's attributes. Allah himself, that personality, that personality whose name was Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The word Ahmad, what does it mean? The one who praises Allah. What was his intelligence? Wahab bin Munabbih rahimullah says, In Allah Ta'ala, Lam yu'ti jami'a al-nas min badi dunya ila in qidaiha min al-aqli fi jambi aqlihi illa ka habbati ramlin bayna rimali dunya. 
He says if the combined uqul and intelligence of every human being from Adam alayhi salam to the last person to come before Qiyamah had to be pooled together and equated to one grain of sand, then the aql and intelligence of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be all the grains of sand on the surface of the earth. That knowledge, that intelligence, that uqul, allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam. مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابِ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى These are verses of the Qur'an in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the extent to which the doors of knowledge and comprehension were opened upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last verse which I recited فَأَوْحَى Allah says we inspired, we sent wahi, we opened the door of uloom, intellect, intelligence. Ala abdihi, upon his slave, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how much? To what extent did Allah open the door of knowledge, comprehension upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ma awha, Quran does not tell us how much. This expression ma, in other words, imagine whatever you want beyond that is the intellect of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That type of knowledge, that type of comprehension, that type of perception, that type of understanding and yet himself he says لا أستطيع ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك Oh Allah, I also cannot describe you as you ought to be described. Allahu Akbar this is the cornerstone of faith. This constituted the first basic effort of every Nabi of Allah from Adam alayhi salam to Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the foundational pillar. This effort to remove the greatness to remove this concept or idea that nafa and dhur, benefit and harm, advancement or decline, health or sickness. Kuffar of Makkah, they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the question they asked. Those who understand Arabic will understand how comprehensive this question was. Hallana, Hallana, min al amri, min shay. Like I said, those who understand Arabic, there's no room left in this question. Do we, it's difficult to do justice in English to translate this. But, basic translation, do we, as human beings, or call it governments, or call it superpowers, or call it whatever you want, do we in any way have any ability to influence any affair? Hallana min al amri min shay. Jibreel is sent. Kul, tell them, in al amra kullahu lillah. Every affair, every amr, every decree, every advancement, every decline, every life, every death, every breath of air, lillah belongs to Allah. No government is doing, no system of this world is doing, no science is doing, no technology is doing, no industry is doing, no monetary system is in any way influencing anything in the heavens and the earth. إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ كُلَّهُ لِلَّهِ لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّ الْقُوَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا مَا يَفْتَحِ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ فَلَا مُمْسِكَ لَهَا وَمَا يُمْسِكْ فَلَا مُرْسِلَ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍّ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَيُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَ لِفَضْلِهِ all these verses I have recited and many, many more verses in the Qur'an 
one basic sabak and lesson the starting point the cornerstone of faith that far se lekar arsh tak from the earth to the arsh of the allah of allah whatever you see whatever shape whatever form no matter how powerful no matter how impressive no matter how numerous put any color put any description put any perception put any understanding upon it from the earth to the arsh of allah all these verses of the quran one basic lesson that everything is dead nothing benefits nothing harms nothing lives nothing dies nothing advances nothing declines illa allah except with the permission qudrat will and irada of one allah every nabi of allah from adam alayhi salam to janab rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this was alif ba ta tha this was the starting point this constituted the cornerstone of faith this dawat this invitation shahid allah shahid allah annahu la ilaha illa hu والملائكة شهيد الله أنه لا إله إلا الله والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط شهيد الله الله بيس تستمني the greatest دعوت the greatest call the greatest proclamation the greatest invitation شهيد الله الله بيس تستمني to this والملائكه الله's angels bear testimony to this واولو العلم the people of knowledge bear testimony to this from the first day that the first human being sayyidina adam alayhi salam was sent to this world this was the foundation the basis upon which adam alayhi salam came on the one side this dawat this invitation of haq of the truth of la ilaha illa allah and the other side and the other side fa bima aghwaytani la aqudanna lahum siratak al mustaqim thumma la atiyannahum min bayni aydihim wa min khalfihim wa an imanihim wa an shamailihim wa la tajid aktharahum shakirin look at the mana in which quran opens up the masla to us in which quran places before humanity the reality haq batil from the first day ihbitu minha jami'a fa imma ya'tiyannakum minni hudan fa man tabi'a hudaya fala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun allah sends Adam alayhi salam down to this earth ihbitu minha jami'a Adam alayhi salam came with haq with the dawat of haq with the invitation of haq with the effort of haq and on the other side batil shaitan what type of effort did he come with he took an oath He took an oath upon Allah. What oath? La aqudan lahum. La aqudan lahum. Is come out of this deception or thought that those who are engaged in the effort of haq can ever become complacent, can ever sit back. This concept or idea that we are like a well. and people must come to us then they will benefit we are not prepared to go to them allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the very root negated this concept or idea that haq will never be complacent haq will never sit back he said my example my example and the example of those of anbiya alaihi wassalatu wassalam that were sent with the truth and the effort of the truth the mafhum of the hadith he said kamathali ghayr our example is like rain water whether the ground is conducive whether the ground is hard 
whether the ground will not even accept that rainwater. The rainwater falls everywhere. It does not wait. Rainwater is something of movement. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam compared himself with this to negate this idea or concept that those who are on the truth and the effort of truth can ever become complacent or sit back and wait that others should come to them. Our example is not that of a well of water that whoever wants to come and benefit will benefit. No. Our example, we have to go to them. This is batil. Batil. Shaitan took an oath. Lam and Noon Mushaddad. When it comes together in one expression, it carries the meaning of Qasam and oath. Shaitan said, La lahum. I will go to every one of them. I, I will sit in their path. Siratak al Mustaqim. I will become an obstacle for guidance to them. And what type of effort did Shaitan take an oath with Allah that he will make? Shaitan and the followers of Shaitan, Batil and the proponents of Batil, La'atiyannahum, Thumma La'atiyannahum, again Qasam, again oath. I will go to them, Min bayni aydihim, Wa min khalfihim, Wa an aymanihim, him, I will go to them, I will come to them from the front. I will come to them from behind. I will come to them from the right. I will come to them from the left. Many, many interpretations of this, the Mufassireen, the commentators of the Quran have given. What does this mean? I will come to them from the front. What lies in front? Mot. What lies in front? Qabr. What lies in front? Akhirat. What lies in front? Fariqun fil Jannah. Wa fariqun fil Sa'ir. One group in Jannat. One group in Jahannam. This promise of Shaitan. I will come to them from the front. What does it mean? One beautiful explanation of this is that Shaitan's effort will be to create a culture of denial of moth and qabr and akhirat. This life is forever. Like, like throughout the ages, Quran tells us, throughout the ages, this was a common plot and a common cunning of shaitan. That many, many nations, many nations, they would say, to the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam Aitha kunna idhaman nakhira Qalu tilka idhan karratun khasira Then what are you saying? That I will die Going to the grave The body will be eaten by insects And then those insects will be eaten by other insects And those, those insects eaten by other insects Till eventually Allah's system Allah's promise Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. I am digressing. But even in this verse, we are encouraged that when you grow to the graveyard, you pick up the sand. The sunnah is taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the significance of it? Is it just a meaningless practice? Are we just picking up sand and flinging it into the grave? Are we just reading this verse? Is this what Quran is there for? Take a few seconds and pause. What does Allah say? What is this dua that is taught to us? What is this practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Minha khalaqnakum. Allah says we created you from the sand. From the sand we created you. Look at sand. You take a seed. Sometimes it's an orange. Sometimes it's an apple. Sometimes it's a cucumber. Sometimes it's a watermelon. Sometimes it's a coconut. Almost on a daily basis, these various seeds are placed in the ground. Neither in the seed, nor in the sand, Knowing the water that is mixed in it is any sign of an orange tree or an apple tree 
or a coconut tree or different different types of vegetation whether it's a cabbage whether it's lettuce whether it is lemon whether it is sweet whether it is salty whether it is slimy whether it is coarse whether it is fine look at the different myriad types of shapes that almost every second allah taala is extracting from sand from sand if that is not enough for you to comprehend the greatness and the qudrat of allah then what does quran say wa fi anfusikum afala tubsirun look within yourselves look within yourselves today you find youngsters we very impressed german technology japanese technology this is the latest car this so many kilowatts this is the speed at which you can in move with look take one take one motor car whether it's a german car whether it's italian italian i'm saying youngsters will know ferrari first thing that comes into the mind look at that car how many different components how many different factories how many different industries take the steering wheel certain design certain fabric it has to take a certain shape then there's the engine then there's the gearbox then there's the tires then there's the then then there's the seats different different components in different different factories and industries and this we are easily impressed by marvel of technology look at the japanese what they have achieved look at the chinese what they have achieved look at the germans what they have achieved 14 centuries ago my allah in the quran issued a challenge that go to these germans and go to the japanese and go to the chinese and go to these technologists no matter how far they may advance scientifically and technology technologically lay yakhluqu dhubaban lay yakhluqu dhubaban wala wajtama'u la compare what they are manufacturing and producing by what is apparent in front of you of the qudrat and power of allah 14 centuries ago quran issued this challenge that gather the factories and the industries and the scientists of the world tell them to pool all their resources and leave one ferrari or one mercedes benz or one bmw or one land rover tell them to produce manufacture one fly one fly something that is there is a consensus is totally insignificant and what does allah taala say 14 centuries have passed another 14000 centuries may pass by the qasam of my allah they will not be able to produce even one fly forget you insan more complex than producing any ferrari or any mercedes benz or any land rover is this insan and human being i am looking at you you are looking at me have we considered just this i go to the japanese and chinese tell them use their factory use their factory and produce this i use the science use the technology at their disposal what is this i 1 mm of the i accepts 30000 separate points of light in one second at the back of the i there is a hole what is the size of the whole quarter of a millimeter in that hole there is a cable passing through it this cable has 1.3 million wires cable with 1.3 million wires passes through a whole quarter millimeter in size each of those cables contain, co- connected to 10 receptors for light to give you 130 million receptors for light in these eyes where is all this being manufactured some factory is it japan or germany where is the manufacturing taking place one steering wheel if it goes off that car is incomplete such perfection such intricate detail in the manufacturing of allah in the creation of allah where is it happening what does quran tell us fi butuni ummahatikum in the womb of your mothers is it a controlled circumstance she is walking talking jumping lying down moving in different this container is shaking all the time shaking all the time yet such an intricate function is happening just the eye that's one part at the back of the eye is the retina each time an image falls on the retina the muscles around the retina flex 
this flexing causes the retina to, to, to clear so that the next image can fall. This flexing takes place 100,000 times a day. If those same muscles had to be put into your feet, it's the equivalent of walking 70 to 80 kilometers every day. That is the amount of energy that these eyes, the muscles around the eyes are using, equivalent to walking 70 to 80 kilometers every day, yet you don't get tired. Enabling these eyes to take 10 three-dimensional pictures, 800,000 three-dimensional pictures every day. Where is this happening? Fi dhulumatin thalath. Allah says in three layers of darkness. Statistics of 1990 at any given time, every day 300,000 women fall pregnant. Every day, 300,000. Nine months is the normal tenor of pregnancy. 300,000 by 30 by 9. Do the numbers. At any given time, somewhere an eye is being formed, somewhere ears are being formed, somewhere hands are being formed, somewhere feet are being formed, somewhere liver is being formed, somewhere kidney is being formed, somewhere stomach is being formed, somewhere digestive system is being formed. Such intricate, such intricate balances, counterbalances have to be in place. For that one steering wheel of that Ferrari or that Mercedes Benz or that Land Rover or that BMW, where does the components come from? Sometimes they give an order to a certain factory. If there is defect in the component, it cannot be accepted. An artisan has to be put in place, there has to be designing, there has to be a technologist, there has to be an engineer, then there has to be a computer designing upon that just to produce that one steering wheel. What's the raw material which my Allah is using to produce these eyes? That mother herself is not aware. One day she is, she fe she is feeling for figs. Next day she is feeling for dates. Next day she is feeling for mangoes. Next day she is feeling for apples. Ask the youngsters whose wives have fallen pregnant how the demands come. Feeling for this, feeling for that. And yet, and yet, that apple or that pear or that date or that cabbage or that mango or that different different types of food different types of food coming from where from sand from sand Allah is producing it from sand and then different different types of food she is consuming according to the decree of Allah today an apple forms part of the eye tomorrow a cabbage forms part of the eye the next day a, a, a date forms part of the eye the next day cabbage next day a lettuce forms part of the eye sometimes even coca-cola and pepsi is forming part of the eye how is it that different, different materials are being used and yet the same end result? The same intricacy, the same perfection. Allah calls out, Sanurihim, Ayatina, Fil Afaq, Wa Fi Anfusihim, Hatta Yatabayyana Lahum, Annahul Haq. Allah says, We will show you. We will show you, interestingly, interestingly, when signs or academic discussions take place, when something is being, when you are, when you are being led to understand something, then normally, normally the intellect is, appear, uh, the, the intellect is targeted. You try to convince somebody, like I am speaking to you, or you are giving dawah, you try to convince somebody with intellectual arguments you try to convince somebody by presenting intellectual discussions what does Allah say when Allah speaks of his signs Quran uses an ajib word Allah says Sanurihim, we will show you we will show you not discuss with you we will show you awalam 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 yaralladheena kafaru awalam yaralladheena kafaru لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته many many places many places where logically it should have been argue or explain or tell you about Quran uses the word رأى you will see you will see this one explanation is given for this if I had to tell you 
that down the road an accident took place. It was a very wet road, very heavy storm. There was a lot of mist. One truck crushed into 10 or 12 cars. And then those cars catapulted onto some more cars. And then it was a cliff. And many vehicles fell down the mountain. And there was absolute carnage. 150, 200 people lost their lives. Limbs are splattered all over the road. This description, if I have to give you, on the one hand, and you have to step out of this masjid, and one person is crossing the road, and a car does not see him, applies the brakes, but skids into him. And this person's limbs are severed from his body in front of you. You saw one person dying in front of you. Wallah, the effect of what you saw on your heart would be far greater than whatever I told you about 150 people dying where you did not see it. What was the difference? لَيْسَ الْخَبْرُكَ الْمُعَايَنَا What you hear about can never be equal to what you actually see. When Quran speaks of Allah's signs, Allah's qudrat, repeatedly throughout Quran, the word ra'a is used. Allah says, you will see, sanurihim. Sanurihim, in other words, what is the underlying meaning? What is the underlying meaning? وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Quran warns us of a very, very great spiritual malady and sickness. And what is that? That of ghaflat. That of ghaflat. That of negligence. And whenever, many places in the Quran and Hadith, when ghaflat is spoken about, it is equated with what we call qasawatul qalb, the hardening of the heart. The hardening of the heart. When the heart becomes hard, not physically hard, where you go to some cardiologist and he tells you your veins and arteries have become hard. No. Not that type of hardening. The hardening of the spiritual heart, where zulmat, where darkness enters the heart, where the heart becomes hard. In other words, the capacity of the heart to take effect from the signs of Allah, gradually diminish, then what is the effect of this? Allah says, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا They have hearts. They have minds, but they are unable to comprehend. They have sight, but they cannot see. They have eyes, but they cannot see. Not physical sight. What is Quran telling us about? لا تعمل أبصار لا تعمل أبصار ولكن تعمل قلوب التي في الصدور Allah is talking about the heart becoming blind the heart becoming deaf the heart losing the ability to comprehend the heart entering into a state of غفلت so that that which is apparent that which is clear that which is right in front of you you cannot see we find it easy to talk about everything else today but the Qudrat of Allah. Whereas Allah's Qudrat is shining in front of us. Allah's signs, Allah's nur. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Mathalu nurihi kamishkatin fiha misbah. Al misbahu fi zujaja. Al zujaja tu ka annaha kaukabun durri. Yuqadu min shajaratin mubarakatin zaytuna. La sharqiya wala gharbiya. Yakadu zaytuha yudhi. Walau lam tamsas hunar. Nurun ala nur. Nurun ala nur. Yahdi Allah. لِنُورِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah's Noor, Allah's Light. Allah is the Light, Allah is the Noor, Allah is the effulgence of the heavens and the earth. This heart today, because of the incorrect effort, looking at the daughters of others, listening to haram music, planning the disobedience of Allah, where the search, where the thinking of this heart 
is no longer directed towards the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When this tongue, as a result of that, the tongue is speaking of Ghayrullah. The ears are hearing about Ghayrullah. The mind is taking effect from Ghayrullah. Every road and avenue to this heart towards nur, towards light, towards softening of the heart is gradually being shut off. This is why, my respected brothers, the manifest signs of Allah are there in front of us, yet we cannot see it. This tongue, it has become difficult for this tongue to move in the praising of Allah. For us to hear the talks of Allah's greatness. Today look at the youth, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, in front of the shaitan box. Body is jiving to haram music. Hours and hours in front of the internet. This month of Ramadan also. This month of Ramadan also. This month of Ramadan also. How is it that we've got time for the mobile? How is it that we've got time for these other activities? Such an opportunity Allah Ta'ala is giving us. Yet, this is a sign of what we call Qasawatul Qal, where the heart has become hard. The heart has become hard. That is why the capacity of the heart to take effect from that which is glaring, that which is right in front of us is no longer there. I digressed. Coming back to what we were saying, this dua was taught to us, this practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you pick up that sand, Minha khalaqnakum. Minha khalaqnakum. Ponder. Reflect. Allah says, we created you from sand. Look at the complexity of Allah's creation. Look at the extent of Allah's qudrat and power. Like I said, there is no words. There is no intellect that can comprehend Allah's greatness. What we have this brain. What is the brain? Brain is just a piece of flesh. Eyes are a piece of flesh. Ears are a piece of flesh. Hands are a piece of flesh. Allah's tajalli. Allah's tajalli directed towards this. I am looking at you. You are looking at me. Take a few seconds and ponder and reflect. What complexity, what design, what intelligence has to be in place just for this one process to take place. That which Quran draws our attention to. Alam naj'al lahu aynayn. Allah says, didn't we give you two eyes? Didn't we give you the sight? What is the sight actually for? Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua. Allahumma rzuqni ladhatan nadhri ila wajhi. Allahumma rzuqni lazzatan nazri ila wajhik. O Allah, grant me the lazzat and ecstasy of being able to look directly at you in Jannah. That is the goal. Dunya is not the goal. Shaitan promised. La aqudanna lahum sirataka al mustaqim. Thumma la atiyanna hum min baini aidihim. I will come to them from the front. The denial of Qabr, the denial of Akhirat. Ghaliban it was Ubay bin, uh, Ubay bin Kaab or As bin Wail that once comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Muhammad, in his hand he has some skeletal remains which has become very coarse over a long period of time. So what does he do? He takes these skeletal remains and he crushes it in his hands so that it turns into dust and then he blows upon this and with absolute arrogance Ya Muhammad Atazum Anna Rabbak Yuhi Hadihi Wahiya Ramim What is your claim? Are you saying that your Rabb your Rabb is going to give life to this decrepit bones Wahiya Ramim, when they have diminished like this? Arrogance! Jibreel is sent. 
اولم یر الانسان انا خلقناه من نطفه فاذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي انشاها اول مره وهو بكل خلق عليم This is Quran cry tears of blood my respected brothers when this ummah lost its munasabat with the Quran This month of Ramadan what does Allah highlight what does Allah highlight shahru Ramadan shahru Ramadan the month of Ramadan first thing that comes to the mind when you hear Ramadan is what siyam fasting technically it should have been alladhi kutiba fihi as-siyam the month of ramadan in which we prescribe fasting for you yet allah doesn't say that what does allah say shahru ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-quran the month of ramadan in which we reveal the quran and what is quran what is the mazmoon of the quran what is the object of the quran what is the subject matter of the quran what is the goal of the quran what is the direction of the quran hudallin nas quran is hidayat ramadan is hidayat quran is highlighted in ramadan and quran is hidayat maqsad and object of quran is hidayat ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه when allah introduces the quran opening verses of surah baqara right in the beginning alif lam mim ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين quran is hidayat man ja'alahu amamahu saqahu ila al janna my nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if my ummah will keep this quran in front of them this quran will take them to jannah ومن جعله خلفه قاده الى النار and if my ummah will turn its back on the quran it's not i'm not going into the fiqhi bahas that we leave to the ulama ikram to go into the fiqhi or what are the juristic rulings etc but where is the shauq and shaghaf and inclination for quran one time in the year one time in the year we get the chance few years ago our jamaat was in one town we passed by one masjid outside they had sign posts one arrow pointing this way parking for 8 rakats tarawi and one arrow pointing the other direction parking for 20 rakats tarawi like i said i'm not going into the fiqh ikhtilaf But the one chance in the year Allah gives this ummah to connect with the Quran and they also we are looking for shortcut. Ramadan comes and go and not one khatam of the Quran. One day of Ramadan passes and not even one juz one sipara of the Quran we have read. You look at the hands of the person what is he got he got mobile phone we got time for the mobile. Imam Malik rahimahullah he said when Ramadan would start akhadha al-mushaf dakhala al-masjid he would enter the masjid take the Quran put it in front of him and immerse himself the entire Ramadan in the Quran and he would say he would stop speaking he would stop speaking and he would say la kalam ma kalamillah when i have allah's kalam in front of me how can i speak anything else besides the quran these were those hearts that had the nur that had the light had the comprehension yaqub taymi rahimahullah tabi'i he says i entered the haram of makka i saw usman radiyallahu ta'ala nu reading ghaliban tahajjud salah i stood behind him usman started surah fatiha i had this just to you i had this curiosity when i was speak how long how long would he read how much quran would he read he says i stood behind him usman started surah fatiha by the qasam of my allah i didn't go into ruku until he reached surah nas the entire quran in one rakat one rakat of tahajjud salah and what would usman radiyallahu ta'ala say lo tahurat qulubukum ma shabi'tum min kalam allah azza wa jalla If your hearts were pure, 
if your hearts were pure, you would never get tired of listening to Quran. Taharat of the Qalb, this is pure. Allahu Akbar. In Hadihil Kulub Tasda, Kama Yasta ul Hadid. My Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Like steel rust, like steel degenerates. He said, These hearts degenerate also. These hearts become hard. These hearts rust. Sahaba said, Ma jilauha. Ya Rasulullah, what is the cure? What is the, what is the chem, put it in our terms, chemical process by which the heart can be softened, by which the steel can be removed, by which the melody can be removed, by which the hardness can be softened. What? Ma jilauha. He said, Tilawatul Quran. Tilawatul Quran. Immerse yourself in the Quran. What is your claim? Your Rabb will give life to the skeletal remains after they have degenerated like this. Look at Quran. Awalam yaral insan. Again, Allah uses the word yara. Yara. Can you not see what is wrong with you? Awalam yaral insan. Anna khalaqnahu. From what did we create you? Where did you come from? Today you are questioning Allah's qudrat and power. That how that sand will once again become a human being. You are questioning Allah's qudrat and power when this is a sign of his qudrat. This is a sign of his qudrat that from sand he created you and he will turn your being back into sand. This is Allah's qudrat. That that eye came from sand, the ears came from sand, the hands and feet came from sand, and you stand in that graveyard and you attest to that. Minha khalaqnakum from the sand Allah created, and through His qudrat and His power, He will turn you back into sand. Awalam yaral insan anna khalaqnahu min nutfa faida huwa khasimum mubin. Today He is arguing. Today He has pride over His technology and science and universities and industries. Khasimun Mubin wa Darabalana Mathala. Allah says He even gives examples. He even gives examples. Darabalana Mathala. Wanasiya Khalqa. And he forgets where he came from. His arrogance. Who is going to give life to these decrepit bones when they have perished like this? Call. Tell them. Yuhi Haladi. Ansha'aha awwala marra That Allah who every second is showing his qudrat and power in front of you That those women are walking and talking and sitting and eating and moving in different directions And yet they are consuming the sand of the earth And that sand sometimes in the shape of an apple Sometimes in a banana Sometimes in a cabbage Sometimes in a carrot Sometimes in a lettuce Kulla yawmin huwa fi shan In different different ways Allah shaped that sand into different different types of of vegetation it is being consumed Allah's plant Allah's te technological plant with complexity three layers of darkness the womb of the mother is using that sand to produce you the same Allah the same Allah will once again resurrect you from that sand shaitan we took an oath. This is batil. Deny qabr. Deny akhirat. Deny accountability. The last verse. The last verse. Yesterday we were in Ireland. So they were reading that verse of the Quran. This is why I'm, it's fresh in the mind. So I'm mentioning it to you. The last verse of the Quran that came down. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَّا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Wallah, if we just understand this one verse, that is sufficient. وَاتَّقُوا Allah says, fear! Prepare, adopt taqwa, adopt the consciousness of Allah. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا A day, تُرْجَعُونَ you didn't come by chance, you were sent. You didn't come by chance, you were sent. Your existence in this world is not a biological accident. 
This is not eat, drink and make merry and die and it's come to an end. No. Yo man, a day is coming. When you will be returned back to your Allah. Wattaqu. Prepare. Adopt taqwa. For a day. Turja'una fihi lallah. When you will be returned back to that Allah who created you. And on that day. Thumma tuwaffa. Kullu nafsim ma kasabat. Wahum la yudhlamun. Allah says in full measure. Ma kasabat. Whatever you did. Whether good or evil, in full measure, you will be recompensed. Or you will be called to account. ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ No exception. Whether rich or poor, whether powerful or insignificant, whoever, wherever, however, every one of you, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُزْلَمُونَ and in Allah's court, there will be no zulm or injustice. <laughs> Shaitan swore an oath. He will come from in front. Ulama say front. Qabar akhirat. Thumma laati yannahum min bayni aydihim. Wa min khalfihim. From behind you. What is behind you this dunya? La uzayyinanna lahum fil ard. لَأُزَيِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Elsewhere Allah mentions Quran, Shaitan took an oath Batil takes an oath We will beautify this dunya for you Today, tashkil is made by going the path of Allah Take out time What is the main excuse? Main excuse, I'm busy Busy for doing what? Busy doing what? Involved in what? Many of us Obviously, there are those that may be working out of necessity Or perceived necessity Majority gone past the stage of necessity. But what happens? The goalpost keeps get pu getting pushed further and further away. I'm giving you one example of one person. Personal experience. My family. One individual. I heard he's now going open a new project. He's going to be building 95 plots in some country. I'm not going into details. One day I was standing behind him in the masjid. Mashallah is musalli. This was just recently. He was in tashahud. To wake up from tashahud. He's gone so old now. To wake up from tashahud took him almost one minute. Just to stand up. So I said to him. Obviously I took his name. I'm not going to mention the name. I said, it took you one minute to wake up from tashahud. And I just heard from your grandson. That you've started a new project with 95 plots. What is the point? What are you trying to achieve? Allahu Akbar, what is the answer? This is not a person away from the masjid. This is someone in the masjid, five time musalli. This is not a person whose life is far away from deen. This is a man who's on deen, apparent deen. And what is the answer? He said, That same grandson that you're talking about, for them I have to do it. I have to do it for them. You know, what does, break this down. What is that statement? I am doing it for the next generation. I am. Doing it for the next generation. I'm planning for the next generation. I'm working for the... In other words, I am trying to sort out the future. My respected brothers, I'm sitting on... Call this the member of the masjid by the qasam of my Allah. There's nothing wrong with that statement. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working out to sort... To working hard to sort out the future. The problem comes about... In what is your understanding of the future? When you are saying that you are chasing behind the dunya to sort out the future. Technically the statement is correct. But what is the future? What is the future? Take 10 people, put them in front of you and ask each one of them. How old are you? You'll hear 10 different answers. Someone will say 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, 12 years, 40 years. Different answers. You are talking about future. Ask this question to all 10 of them. How much time do you have left? You're talking about the future. How much? What is the future? 
What is the future? In Arabic word is Ghad. Ghad, tomorrow. Ghadin, yawmu ghadin, tomorrow. Allah tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Fear Allah and consider what effort and what preparation you have made for tomorrow. Future is not the future of this dunya. Future is qabr and akhirat. Working hard to sort out, to plan for the future, no problem. But what is your understanding of the future? This is that promise of shaitan. He will con convince you your future is in dunya. Janaza upon janaza will be listed in front of you. I don't know what the system in Blackburn is, but our place, we get the message on the phone, on the social media. Almost every day, almost every day, sometimes it's a child, sometimes it's an adult, sometimes it's a male, sometimes it's a female, sometimes it's a mother, sometimes it's a grandfather, sometimes it's an infant. Because Allah's system, in coming into this world, there is a sequence. Father has to come first, then son, then grandson. But in departure by the qasam of my Allah, there is no sequence. Doesn't mean the father came first, he's going to leave first. No. No, there's no sequence. Future is not this. Future is that cover. Shaitan's effort. La uzayyinanna lahum fil ard. La atiyannahum min bayni aydihim. Wa min khalfihim. They will deny akhirat. They will be, become convinced of this world. Min khalfihim. Aymanihim. Aymanihim. I will come to them from the right side. What is the right side? Ulama explained. They say right side is neki, piety. Piety. Where a person becomes fooled by his piety. What is the sign of this? I've run out of time. I'm not going to go into details. Hazrat Muhammad Ilyas Sahib Rahmatullah used to say that those who are engaged in the work or the effort of deen he used to say that there are two great khataras, two great fears I have for them. Greatest fears. Greatest fears, two things. One of the two things that he mentioned is when they will fall into the ghaman and the pride of their piety. What is the sign of this? Ulama say this pride is more dangerous, more dangerous than Pride of wealth. Pride of wealth. The man's got a Hugo Boss suit on. He's wearing a Rado watch or I don't know what these expensive watches are. Or he's driving a fancy car. Automatically he pushes his chest out. That pride is visible. And to treat that pride is easy. Harder than that and more dangerous than that is the pride of piety. Because that pride is not visible. Awalu, awalu man tu sa'aru bihi naru jahannam. Awalu man tu sa'aru. Allahu Akbar. We heard the verse in the Quran in tonight's Tarawih. Inna al-ladheena kafaru bi ayatina. Sawfa nuslihim nara. Kullama nadhijat juluduhum. Baddalnahum juludan ghayraha. Liyadhuqu al-adhaab. Allahu Akbar. Scientists today, they tell us, they say the, the, the largest organ in the body is the skin. The sense, the nerve cells that sense, the sensory indicators of pain are all located in the skin. Remove a man's skin and the ability to feel pain will no longer be there. This scientifically, they tell us now, 14 centuries ago, in the Quran, Allah says, Kullama nadhijat. Juluduhum. Every time one layer of skin will get scorched and burnt. Baddalnahum juludan ghayraha. We will replace it with another layer of skin. We will replace it with another layer of skin. Liyadhuqul adab. So that they can continue feeling the pain of Jahannam. Allah adhan Allahu minha. Allah protect us. Sachi Jahannam. Such a Jahannam. And what does my Nabi say? To sa'ar. 
to sa'ar. There are certain categories of people. Certain categories of people, Allah will use them to stoke and increase the heat of Jahannam. Allah will use them to increase the heat of Jahannam. Jahannam will be stoked with them. Who is it? Automatically, logically, if we had to consider the such a such a warning, such a warning, our beloved Master sallallahu alaihi wasallam gives us mushrik, kafir, zani. If you if it's not mushrik, kafir, at least zani, or sarik. And yet, Allahu Akbar. All three categories he spoke about. I'm not going to go into details. All three categories he spoke about. One is Ali Medin, a man of knowledge, a man of generosity, a man who is of courage. Three beautiful qualities generosity, courage, and knowledge. These are goals, and all in the line of Deen. All in the line of Deen. What will be behind it? Pride. What will be behind it? Trying to show off. Trying to show someone else. These will be the first three categories. To sa'arubihi jahannam. To sa'arubihi naru jahannam. This pride of piety. Pride of piety is such a dangerous thing. Allah protect us. As an Ma'ilya Sahib Rahmatullah said, this is the greatest of the two greatest fears he had for those engaged in the effort of deen. Why? Because this is not visible. It's not visible. What is the sign? What is the sign? What is the sign? Ulama say, when the weaknesses and deficiencies of others become visible to you. Absarul nas man kana bi'aybihi basirun wa'an aybi ghayri dhariran The person with the best sight is the one who when it comes when it comes to his weaknesses, he can see. When it comes to the weaknesses of others, he is blind. Become concerned. Apne aap ko muttaham samaj lo. Regard yourself as guilty. Dhunnu bil mu'minina khaira. Think good of others. Think good of others. Think good of others. This naming and shaming. This social media sickness today of besmirching the character of people and spreading false and malicious rumors come out of this. Ramadan is not just fasting from food and drink. The eyes have to fast. The tongue has to fast. The hands have to fast. The feet have to pass. At least this month. At least this month. Let us not fall into this trap. Shaitan. This is Shaitan's effort. Shaitan took an oath. I will come from the direction of piety. Temptation of haram. Temptation of music, temptation of behayai, temptation of shamelessness, if nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. If no other sabak and lesson we take from Ramadan, my respected brothers. At least this much, at least this much, at least this much, make this ahad, cry before Allah, beg from Allah, ask from Allah for that himmat, an ability to take these shaitan boxes out of our homes. Today, cry tears of blood. You walk into a Muslim home. What's the first thing you see? Illa mashallah. Plasma screen. Somewhere it's curved plasma screens. Millions of pixels. What is it? We have become the architects. Architects of those. We have become the architects of the destruction of the iman of the next generation by introducing such things into our home. This is the cry of our elders. Bring the noor, bring the light. Introduce the halaqat of ta'aleem. Qala Allah, qala Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in every home of the ummat. Thumma la'atiyannahum, min bayni aydihim, wa min khalfihim, wa an aymanihim, wa an shamailihim, wa la tajidu aktharahum shakirin. Batil, this is the effort of batil. Haq, haq. Haq, Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. And the followers of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. As I mentioned, this is not something of complacence. The cornerstone, the foundation, the initial effort. Every Nabi of Allah. Every Nabi of Allah. Nuh alayhi salam. I'm run, I've run out of time. I'm just a few more minutes. Inna arsalna Nuhan ila qawmihi. An anzir qawmak. An anzir qawmak. Allah speaks of the call of Haq. 
the call of anbiya ali salatu wassalam in dar anbiya ali salatu wassalam came to make in dar bashir wa nadira nadir is one of the laqabs and titles of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of this crippled english weak language the translation warner warner nadir warner Mufassirin explain, Nadir doesn't just mean warner. What is the actual meaning of Nadir? What is Indhar? The effort of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Indhar, an Anzir. First revelation after the first five verses of Surah Alaq. When the, you are now my Nabi. What is your day? What is your night? First revelation. Surah Muddathir, Surah Muzzammil. Ya ayyuhal Muddathir, qum. Fa'anzir Kum fa'anzir Anjam ke baare mein khabardar karna Ulama explain, Mufassirin explain What is indar? Anjam ke baare mein Bedar khabardar bana dena To make them aware of what the eventual outcome is going to be What is the goal? What is the direction? This is indar Anbiya Ali Musalatu Salam came with this. On this I will terminate. Ya Iyuhal Muddathir. O my Nabi who covers himself in a cloth. Allah is commanding him with the work of Anbiya Ali Musalatu Salam. But what does Allah say? Qum. Qum. Stand up. Why do you say to someone, stand up? Is he sitting? This is indication that that responsibility which we are giving you. That job and task and mission which we are entrusting you with. Complacency can never enter into it. Rest has come to an end. Come, stand up. In Surah Muzammil. Inna, inna laka fin nahari sabhan tawila. Sabhan tawila. These verses are being revealed in a desert. Water is the last thing in the mind. Should have been a long journey, camel or horse. It's our, it's technically, it's illogical to use this expression. That oh, my Nabi, for you in the day, sabha. Sabha means to swim. It's an action of fish. What is it, what is it related to? If a fish stops swimming. If a fish rests, if a fish takes it easy, if a fish relaxes, that is more than death for it. Sabha, sabha, constant movement, constant movement. That is why, that is why his first expression, Ya Khadija, in qata'a ayyamun nawmi warraha. Khadija, the days of rest and sleep for Muhammad have come to an end. La rahat abad al After this, there will be no rahat, no chain, no complacency, no relaxation. Sabhan tawila, tawila, not just sabha, it, sabha would have been sufficient. Tawila, perpetual, perpetual, perpetual. He tied stones to his stomach. His day and night was given for this. Quran had to come down. Oh my Nabi, are you going to kill yourself? Listen your fikr. Listen your gham. Listen your worry. Qum. Fa. Fa. Biman al-four. Fa. Biman al-four. Immediately. Don't wait. Fa. And there. And there. Anjam ke baare mein khabardar kar dena. Make them aware of what the reality is. What lies ahead. Fa and there and how? What is the cornerstone? What is the starting point? What is the foundation? Wa rabbaka fa kabbir. Introduce the kibriyai and greatness of Allah in the hearts of humanity. Allahu Akbar. The first call that every child, this is Sharia, the command of Allah. The first thing that newborn baby has to hear. Allahu Akbar. Walahul kibriyahu fi samawati walar. Wahu al azizul hakim. Kibar, greatness, authority, majesty in the heavens and earth belongs only to Allah. Give this dawah tirelessly. Effort. Channel your entire efforts in this. And on this, 
my respected brothers, I will terminate Allah's Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Particularly this Ramadan is mashq. This Ramadan is training for us. This Ramadan is training for us. Today the signs of Allah that are apparent in front of us, we can't speak about it. The heart is not taking effect. Why? Because the hearts have become hard. The hearts have become hard. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, La. He said, do not speak excessively of Ghayrullah. Do not speak excessively of Ghayrullah. Because excessive speech, Dawud, Mentioning, talking about Ghayrullah, Yuqassil Qalb will harden the heart. Will harden the heart. Will harden the heart. Wa inna abad al nasi min Allahi al qalbul qasi. And there is no one more distant from Allah than the one whose heart has become hard. Wallah, my respected brothers, these a'mal, dawat, ta'aleem, ibadat, khidmat, this is not some agenda. This is not a numbers game. This is ikhya'ul qalb. This is to give life to this heart. This is to soften this heart. This is why this call is being made. Another Ramadan, shaitan will tell you. Long life, shaitan will tell you. Lot of more opportunity, shaitan will tell you. The reality, the reality, the reality facing you and I, my respected brothers, my Nabi Islam said, if it is morning, don't wait for evening. If it is this Ramadan, become convinced there is no other Ramadan after this. One is, those of us, maybe we're making taraweeh, we can't go for whatever reason. Besides that, besides that, what is holding us back? What is holding us back? Man sama yawman fi sabilillah fi ghayri ramadan. Rasulullah Wasallam said, the person who will fast one day, one day, whilst he is out in the path of Allah, he is fasting one day. Out of Ramadan. Fi ghayri Ramadan. Bu'idan in nar. Mi'at amin. Sayr al mudammir al jawad. Allah will distance him from Jahannam. That distance which a fast horse rider rides for 100 years. Fasting. Fasting in the path of Allah. Outside Ramadan. Fi ghayri Ramadan. In Ramadan what Allah will give him. La ya'lamu thawaba amirihi illallah. Only Allah knows the reward. So don't look left, don't look right. One is, in the heart, if you haven't been for four months, everyone say, inshallah, the earliest opportunity, four months in the path of Allah. But naqal, cash now, at least one ashara, at least one ashara, at least one ashara, we want brothers to make niyat. Individuals, jamaats also, inshallah. Who is ready, inshallah? Come, my respected brothers. Chalo bhai, who will be the first to stand up, mashallah? We don't have to leave tomorrow, at least by next Friday. Ramadan is going by. Awaluhu rahma, awsatuhu maghfira, akhiru itku minan nar. My Nabi said, one ashara is Allah's mercy. One ashara is Allah's forgiveness. One is emancipation from Jahannam. The haq of this month, the value of this month, very difficult to get maximum benefit in our homes. We need to come out in the path of Allah. Come, my respected brothers. Very quickly, make niyad by, inshallah. Chalo bhai. Only one or two names. What about the other brothers, mashallah? Individuals, Jamaats also. Chalo by who else, mashallah? These are moments of acceptance. There are certain moments every day in Ramadan when whatever dua we make gets accepted by Allah. Let us value, value this, this opportunity Allah is giving us. Come, my respected brothers. Chalo bhai, mashallah. Just yesterday we were in Ireland. We, we, don't be deceived by what we see around us that we feel everything is okay. Yesterday we met one brother staying in the musalla, staying in the musalla. Brother, are you fasting? He says, no. Why, I'm not, why are you not fasting? My work requires too much of effort. Staying in the musalla. This is the extent. The ummah that is out there is crying out. It's crying out for us to go. One, one person we place, Allahu Akbar. We don't know who. My jamaat was in Guyana a few months ago. Met one person, Alim, established one whole institute. He says to me, he says, you, you look at me and you look at 
my kurta and you look at my knowledge and you look at this institute, he said, don't be deceived. It was, he took the brother's name, one brother from South Africa. He says, 1972. 1972, I was a little Hindu boy. That Jamaat from South Africa, from Durban, was walking here in Guyana. That person held my hand. Whatever you see, there is a result of that. Who and who Allah is going to use? We have to put ourselves forward, my respected brothers. Who else is ready, mashallah? Come, my respected brothers. Chalo, bhai. More brothers, we want masjid, jama, in, one is individuals, let us tell them, if I'm my masjid, inshallah, one jamaat in the path of Allah. Mashallah. Who else, mashallah? Mashallah. Taqabbal Allah. Barakallah. Himmat karo bhai. Who else, mashallah? You and I can't do bhai. Allah is doing. Allah is the doer. The standing up is dua. Ya Allah, accept me. That's all we are asked to do. Just stand up, Ya Allah, accept me. Then leave it in Allah's hands. MashaAllah. More brothers, make me advice. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم لك الحمد كما أنت أهل فصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد كما أنت أهل وفعل بنا ما أنت أهل فإنك أهل التقوى وأهل المغفرة اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنك تسمع كلامنا وترى مكاننا وتعلم سرنا وعلانيتنا ولا يخفى عليك شيء من أمرنا نحن البائسين الفقراء المستغيثين المستجيرين الوجلين المشفقين المقرين المعترفين بذنوبنا نسألك مسألة المساكين ونبتهل إليك ابتهال المذنب الذليل وندعوك دعاء الخائف الضرير دعاء من خذعت لك رقبته وذل لك جسمهم وراغم لك أنفهم وفاضت لك عبرته اللهم لا تجعلنا بدعائك شقيا وكلنا رؤوفا رحيما يا خير المسؤولين ويا خير المعطين اللهم اغفر وارحم وتجاوز سيئات أمة حبيبك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أصلح أمة حبيبك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهد أمة حبيبك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في غزة وفي فلسطين وفي غيرها يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم واربط على قلوبهم وثبت أقدامهم وعجل بنصرهم يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم استخدمنا لخدمة دينك بالإخلاص والاستقامة والعافية اللهم خذ من ناصيتنا للبر والتقوى وعذنا من الشيطان وشركه يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم اجعلنا ممن صام رمضان إيمانا وإحتسابا فغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومتعنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين الحمد لله